If they wrote this into a cop show plot, you would roll your eyes and scoff. Three missing women, gone since they were girls, found alive together a decade later in the same Cleveland house. Three brothers in their 50s taken as suspects. We can't imagine what these women went through. Can't imagine the pain the families have endured through the candlelight vigils, the false leads, the searches involving jackhammers and cadaver dogs. But maybe tonight we can share in their surreal joy. Tonight was one for the believers. The posters have been part of Cleveland's landscape for a decade. The weathered or tattered ones replaced again and again by families who refuse to give up, who refuse to stop praying for a moment like this. Help me, I'm Amanda Berry. You need police, fire, or ambulance? I need police. Okay, and what's going on there? I've been kidnapped and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm, I'm here, I'm free now. That is the voice of Amanda Berry calling 911 tonight. The last time anyone in her family heard that voice, she was a day shy of turning 17, called her sister to say she was catching a ride home from her job at Burger King, and then she vanished. That was the last I ever heard from her, not an answer after that. Tonight, she is 27 years old and free, thanks in part to police who got an ovation on this Cleveland street, and thanks in large part to a passing neighbor named Charles Ramsey, who had the compassion to respond to her cries for help. And I look and I see this girl and she just going nuts on the door. So I'm like, what's your problem? You stuck, just open the door. And she says, I can't, he got it locked. And I look how he has it and it's only enough to reach a hand out to grab the mail and you know, close the door. And she, we, you know, naturally gonna pry it open. That didn't work. So we had to kick open the bottom. Luckily on that door it was aluminum, it was cheap. And she climbed out with her daughter. She went to my house, we called 911. That's right. He said Amanda escaped with her daughter, a report that brings back chilling memories of J.C. Dugard, who gave birth to two daughters while being held by her kidnappers for over 18 years. When these girls were abducted, that they went into this environment with a person or persons and probably were held against their will for a period of time, but then that world becomes their reality. But aside from her little girl, Amanda Berry had others in the house to worry about tonight. About five minutes after the police got here, see, the girl Amanda told the police, I ain't just the only ones, it's some more girls up in that house. So they went up there, you know, 30, 40 deep, and when they came out, it was just astonishing. Uh, for these officers uh, that have been working these cases for all these years, um, it was just amazing to see the, uh, to see the emotion uh, on these uh, seasoned law enforcement officers when they went in there and saw Amanda and Gina and Michelle. Yes, inside the home, they also found Georgina de Jesus, who also went missing from this very neighborhood nine years ago, walking home from a middle school a few blocks from where Amanda disappeared. Tonight, that little girl on findgeorgina.com is 23 years old. And they also found Michelle Knight, who went missing in 2000, but since she was 20 at the time, didn't get as much attention as the younger girls. But all three are getting much loving attention at Metro Health Medical Center. Currently, they're safe. We're in the process of evaluating their medical needs. Um, they appear to be in fair condition at the moment. We love you, Amanda! How big is this for you, though, to have three people to survive? This is really good because this isn't the ending we usually hear to these stories, so we're very happy. We're very happy for them. Now attention turns to the kind of person or persons who could have held prisoners like this for so long. Police will only say they have three Hispanic men in custody, ages 50 to 54, but our sources tell us they are brothers. The middle brother's name, Ariel Castro, and according to his neighbor, he lived a life far above suspicion. We see this dude every day. I mean, every day. How long have you lived here? I've been here a year. Okay. You still come up from? Right. I barbecue with, with this dude. We eat ribs and, and whatnot and listen to salsa music. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. And you had no indication that there was anything going on? Bro, not a clue that that girl w was in that house or anybody else was in there against their will because how he is 
is I just, he just comes out to his backyard, plays with the dogs, tinker with his cars and motorcycles, goes back in the house. So he's somebody that you look and you look away because he's not doing nothing but the, the average stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. There's nothing exciting about him. Well, until the day. What an amazing account uh, from an amazing character we'll be hearing more about, certainly. But we're going to turn now to a man who knows all too well what it's like to lose a child, wait for that child. John Walsh, longtime host of America's Most Wanted, joins us from our bureau in Washington. John, any night they can solve three missing persons cases and go home with smiles is an amazing night. What was your reaction when you heard? Bill, incredible. What, what a great night. Three women are back alive. Um, and a little girl that may have been a creation of the kidnapper and, and, and the abductor. Um, I wanted to do cartwheels. I know what it's like not to know where your child is. I, I went through that horrible pain. And I still think it's, it's wonderful that I at least found parts of, of Adam. But what a night I could do cartwheels. It's just an incredible, wonderful thing. And I know you want to sing the praises of Charles Ramsey, who is already the darling of the internet with the most colorful uh, sound bites of this whole story so far. But this guy saved three lives. I saw it firsthand in the 25 years I've been doing America's Most Wanted. The public wants to help. They don't know how to help. They have the guts to help me catch 1,200 bad guys and recover 60 missing children. Here's Charles Ramsley walking home. As he said so succinctly, I'm a black guy. I saw a white woman help, uh, crying for help, and I went to help her and broke her out. Amanda Berry saved her life, two other women's lives, and their child. And Charles Ramsey is the guy that broke him out of that house of horrors. I, if I ever meet him, I'm going to give him the biggest hug. It would have been so easy for him to just keep his head down and go home, but he didn't. And, and let me ask you, as an investigator, what would you be looking for in terms of the suspect in this case, his, his methods and motives? Certainly, everybody thinks it's the pervert under the bridge with the trench coat. I've done so many of these cases where it's just the guy next door. It's just the guy that seems like he's okay. What amazed me is how he could keep three grown women and a child in that house without some point in 10 years, one of them being able to contact somebody. But now sources say that his two brothers have been arrested. We all wondered if he had help. How do you keep three grown women and a child in a house in a neighborhood and that they're never seen? So this would make a lot of sense if he had help, if his two brothers helped him run this house of horrors and keep these three women and that child there for 10 years, I hope they burn in hell. Well, it's something we'll be following in coming days. And as we said at the top, this one was one for the hopeful tonight. It's so great, great to have a, a moment of victory after all those years of tragedy, talking about other stories that don't go as well. John Walsh, thank you. Thank you, Bill.